Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's Tech Voices, we're talking about artificial intelligence and software as a service. AI is relatively new for businesses, while software as a service, or, or SaaS, has been around for more than 20 years. To talk about how these two technologies work together, I'm joined by Josh Bigley, Senior Market strategy, Strategist at Cribble. Hello to you, Josh. Hi, James. Thanks for having me. I think I got your title out. I know it's, it's a new title. I haven't practiced it yet either, so I think I, I, I hope I got that out okay. It sounds great to me, and if it's not officially my title, that's okay. Uh, I want that to be my title now and forevermore. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, let's talk about artificial intelligence in the enterprise and how it affects SaaS and SaaS sprawl. But first, what, what, what exactly is SaaS sprawl? We're talking about when, when someone, uh, they could use eight software as, a, software as a service tools maybe, but they really have signed up for, for 18 or 28. Is, is that SaaS sprawl? It's definitely SaaS sprawl. So think about SaaS being any software that you can sign up for, uh, whether it's an individual, an organization, a team, and it's typically built by consumption, whether that's the amount of data that you send, the number of queries that you run, or the number of seats that you buy. It's really this uh, click, credit card, consume model, uh, and it's driving SaaS adoption, but also the sprawl that goes along with it. Well, so this is, I mean, I know for, for years and years, we've been warned about, um, you know, shadow IT and like all those, you know, employees are using the company, the division credit card and they sign up for all these SaaS products. And this is, this is really, it's sort of what you're talking about is shadow IT. Yeah, shadow IT may be taunted by AI when all the new tools that are being created. Like this is, this is shadow IT untamed. Well, okay. So I think maybe what's going on and correct me if I'm wrong here is that a lot of new companies are coming to the market, they're generative AI or, or they claim they are. So there was a tool that used to like, I don't know, check your check your verb usage. And that was really a great, good old fashioned tool. And now there's three tools that check your past tense verb usage and your present tense verb usage. And they're really great, but they're really niche because they, they wanted to get into the market. They're finding some really uh, small niche uh, usage. Does any of that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. Think about all those tools that you would use and they were uh, very broad based. In the past, we would install those tools so security could have some visibility into what was going on on our individual machines. But now we've got AI IDEs, we've got generative AI tools that run in our browsers, and it's becoming more and more difficult to look at what's Josh using? Is he doing both you know, past tense and present tense verb checks? Um, it's accelerating the, the posture of uh, security threats, especially Gen AI, where you can copy and paste entire swaths of text into your browser. That's that becomes maybe that keeps me up at night if I was on the security side of the house. Mm, in other words, what you're talking about, they're copying and pasting swaths of text into the the, the AI tools. Are you saying? Absolutely, yeah. Think about it. even inter interfacing with ChatGPT. I'm going to tell ChatGPT all of my uh, personal secrets, mm -hmm. uh, the, my, my greatest loves, my greatest fears. Mm -hmm. How's that data getting used? And you know, rinse and repeat for every interesting business use case that is being addressed by a new tool, whether that tool is built by a company that's been around for 25 years or 25 days. They're all very interesting and likely catching my attention and my credit card number. Well, I think it's exactly a, an issue that employees don't always realize. They're copying and pasting this, this very confidential stuff into the AI model. I don't mean ChatGPT in particular, but it's, it's suddenly it's been entered into the AI model. Who knows if it's going to be used to train the AI model? And, and some other some person, you know, 500 miles away, two weeks from now, asks, you know, what's, what's the corporate formula for, for X corporation? And, and suddenly it, it comes up as part of the model. And you realize, oh, goodness, it's almost like public domain now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I... I'm terrified of this idea of black box AI. When I think about what AI is doing, I read the, the terms and conditions. I want to know, how are you using my data? Is there a way for me to opt out of you using my data to train uh, models? Uh, in our space, that's, that's extremely relevant. You see uh, petabytes of data a day as a, as a tool like Cribble. How, how are we going to use that data? Are we going to be training that, that, uh, our data models based on the data that you have against maybe one of your competitors, keeping that uh, that separate uh, is crucial for AI. I mean, data is not slowing down. Uh, tools, including SaaS tools, are continuing to drive. Forrester talks about this more than 29%. We've gone up a percentage point since last year. Uh, Kager in uh, telemetry growth. 
that telemetry is being uh, that growth is being exacerbated now by this you know click credit card consume model. Every new tool is a new source of telemetry and sometimes a new destination of telemetry that you want to send. It's starting to become this vicious circle. All right, I think I understand some of the issues. So if we if we summarize it down, what what in essence is the problem we're dealing with right now? Uh, it really comes down to uh, an individual or a team needing to solve a, a critical problem and the consumption models being relatively easy. You know, I looked at some of the, the statistics that uh, came out in the last 12 uh, months or so. And what I saw was about 250 individual SaaS tools at any given company. Companies are spending about $5,000 an employee. Mm. So to me, that is a, we talked about shadow IT, but even if you could track all 250 tools being used, that's a very large operational footprint. It's a large set of telemetry that you need to collect to keep those secure and operationalized. And $5,000 an employee is, is not a small bill to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, well then, if that that is the problem. What what really is the solution? What can businesses do? It, it seems like one of the problems, one of the issues driving the problem is that employees really do need to get their work done. And if they're turning to new tools to do that, they're gonna hop on that and they've got deadlines and they can't be worried about, they, they themselves are not so worried about the corporate finances. The company obviously is, but sure. given, given all the competing forces, what 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 is the reasonable solution? So I think the, the, the reasonable solution is a, a merger between uh, shadow IT, which really isn't going to go away. There's always going to be that tool that I need to, you know, to use. Uh, we saw this a lot during the pandemic as uh, companies uh, that were delivering uh, telepresence and uh, the telecommunication suddenly went through the roof. Everyone wanted to sign up for the, you know, the latest and greatest. Right. That's where you want to enable employees to get their work done but it needs to be in a, in a collaborative way. I, I know that when I interact with uh, my teammates, we find the tools that matter, but we also make sure that we're being open and transparent. That means making sure that when tools get adopted, that they are feeding into the telemetry pipelines that feed security, IT, business operations. It's all about being open and transparent with uh, the sources of data and the destinations of, those, of that data as well. Well, I'm, what I'm listening for also is like who in the corporate uh, org chart is responsible for putting in place or monitoring or policing the, the option that you just you know, elucidated? Uh, I don't think that there's an individual or an individual team that is solo responsible uh, for it. It's really this merger of uh, security, uh, IT operations, business operations and accounting. Uh, I wish that there were some uh, a tool. Maybe we could get AI to write us one, where, <laughs> right. and we could deliver it via SaaS, where sure. you can simply find every tool and uh, and every uh, permutation of uh, 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 past tense uh, uh, and uh, pre tense <laughs> that, that we needed, and we would just it would magically work. Right. Uh, the reality is that it comes down to you know setting best practices, uh, doing regular audits. Uh, making sure that uh, you've got that risk and compliance posture uh, for your employees and that you're really getting the right data um, from their machines or from your IT environment into the right tools for those operational excellence, uh, security excellence postures that you need to set up. So it sounds like it's an overall grid, a grid framework that the business would lay down that in theory, all the employees would, would go by. Yeah, and I don't think that this is a 2025 problem uh, per se. It's just exploding at a, a much faster pace than we've seen in the past, uh, you know, decade or even the past 20 years. Uh, again, AI is driving exponential growth in telemetry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also driving that exponential growth in new tools. I am just as guilty as the next person of signing up for a tool or for 10 different tools that all do kind of the same thing, but just a little bit different. And I want to play with them all. Hmm. All right, well, let's talk about Cribble itself and uh, Cribble and data management. Or you know, what are the major ways that Cribble supports companies as as a data engine or as, as a provider? Yeah, so Cribble is that data engine for IT and security. Uh, and we talked a little bit about the challenges that you're faced with with SaaS sprawl. You've got new sets of operational data. Uh, if it's uh, uh, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, but you've also got those tools that now need to be powered by sets of data. The sources and the destinations don't always uh, you know, interact well. Data formats are different, data types are different. 
Uh, Cribble is at the center of that data, regardless of the tools that you choose to adopt or the destinations that need to be uh, powered by the telemetry from those tools for IT or security teams, Cribble sits in the middle. That's that uh, uh, the data pipeline or the, uh, sorry, let me back that up. That's the data engine for IT and security. Uh, so whether you're talking SaaS, on-premises, hybrid, uh, Cribble's in the business of powering teams with the right tools, the right telemetry uh, at the right time. Well, all right, am I hearing then that if, if a company has Cribble installed, it doesn't need as much management? Is, is that part of the pitch there? Not necessarily. Not that you need less management, that, but management becomes more manageable. Uh, you give control over that data, uh, whether it's onboarding that the data sources, getting it, you know, turning logs into metrics or turning traces into metrics or sticking data into long term storage so that your security risk and compliance folks can get access to it. It's really about uh, uh, making sure that the, the sources are, are tapped and that the destinations are well fed. And is, is part of it putting together like there's siloed information, something is on premise, something is in a legacy database somewhere and it helps track that or not necessarily? We don't necessarily get into the, the database itself, uh, but where data might be siloed today, uh, having a way to tap that data and share it across teams is absolutely one of our superpowers. Mm -hmm. So I think about one of my favorite stories to tell is about network data. My background is uh, network monitoring. Uh, when you send network data to network teams, it's in a very specific format. It also tends to be very verbose. So hmm. teams tend not to hold on to it very long. Three to seven days tends to be that average. Now, explode SaaS, where I need to collect more data from more uh, endpoints because it's not just in my uh, enterprise uh, data center, it's also on James's laptop and Josh's laptop. Now hmm. I need more data from more places. And I need to feed more teams. I need to feed the security team, but they can't take that proprietary format. I need to give metrics to the, to the IT teams because they need to detect what's going on. And I also need to take all of this data and stick it someplace so that in three months, if we need to go do an investigation, we can go back and get to that data. Hmm. Now, if I can take that network data, still continue to power the network team, convert that data to metrics for the IT team, convert it to a log-like format for the security team. Oh, and still stick it into long-term storage. That one source, four different use cases. Those are the types of uh, superpowers that people are looking for today. Really helps to put your arms around the SaaS sprawl. Maybe give it a, a tight hug uh, mm -hmm. or squeeze it off if you can. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you put it in a sleeper hold is the, the better analogy. Interesting. Okay, a lot of good stuff. I, I, I guess any sense of where we're going with the future? It's may, maybe a curveball question. I mean, think about you know data management and data engines two years from now, five years from now. Um, what do you think might be going on where in, in any way we can get ready for it now? Yeah, data is not slowing down. You know, Forrester right. talks about that 29% growth. I don't see that number uh, slowing down, I see AI making that growth uh, even uh, more pronounced. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we tame this beast? I wish I had a crystal ball that could look two and, or five years out of the future and say, James, this is what we're going to need. Mm -hmm. uh, what I will see, say is figure out how to make sure that the data that you're getting in can power multiple teams. It's when we have uh, unique data sources that are paired to unique teams that we get confusion in the industry. The security team sees data one way, IT sees, sees it another way, business analytics sees it another way. And if we can have that one source of truth, uh, powering multiple tools of analysis and visualization, I see that as the, the future for really getting a handle on what's going on in the IT space today. So like a solution, it, it might it may be easier said than done, but I, I could see it happening. Um, Josh, thank you for a, a lot of good thoughts and your expertise. And uh, please do come back and talk with us again sometime. Absolutely, James. Thanks for having me.